Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hi. So you get a script. It's catch twenty two. Mm -hmm. And you think what? Well, I think I'm not going to do it when they they send it to us because it is sort of this beloved novel and uh, and it's you know, fifty years old and. You know, in general, you don't want to take those sort of things on. The advantage we had was that it was actually six episodes, so you were gonna, you were able to spend time with each of the characters. A lot of characters that die because it is World War II, and you know, if you're gonna, if you were doing it and condensing it into a movie, it's really hard to care about these characters in such a short period of time. So, the the scripts were really good, and then, um, and I thought, well, the best thing to do would be to get the absolute greatest cast. Couldn't do that, but we got these two instead, <laughs> which was cheaper. You know, much cheaper. Yeah. Much, yeah. Much, Is yeah. he always like this? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes he's a lot funnier, though. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that actually it was its, its own Catch-22 because the book is so beloved. It's mm -hmm. a classic. It hasn't, up to now, been translated to screen all that well. So... It's sort of like, I have a great piece of material, mm -hmm. but should I dare to put it on television? But you can't, you know, the fun part, and I think for all of us feel the same way, which is you can't operate from a place of fear. Mm -hmm. You just have to, you know, this is still, um, it's what we do for a living, and so part of it is you want to take chances. It's no fun to just do things that are guaranteed, and we were really proud of this. You know, we felt like the, the tone was going to be the trick, and, and we were really proud of it. So Kyle, you get a call from George Clooney, and he says, "I've got a project for you." Mm. Yeah, that's how it happened. Um, and he calls me George Clooney, by the way, Mr. Oh, Clooney. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Oh, Mr. Uh, Clooney. It feels more comfortable. Ever it's since I got gray, ever it's, since I got gray. You didn't screen the call. <laughs> Decline. No, not uh, once, but not no. <laughs> um, no, I, I I was told that uh, Mr. Clooney was going to call me <laughs> and talk to me about Catch Twenty Two, and to be quite honest, I had the same similar reaction, like. You know, out of all the things he's going to call me about, Catch-22, really? You're going to do a remake? But then after speaking with um, both he and Grant and also um, after reading it, it was, it, it, I had to do it. It wasn't a matter of, there, there was no conversation with myself. It was, yes, it's, it was just written so wonderfully. And I think that when I read it, I could see, feel, and, and, and know exactly what it was going to be. And I think it was like 90% of what I believed and then doing the process is what happened. And it was just a great experience like that. It was, uh, it's just so well, you've seen a little bit of it. Mm -hmm. The textures, the look, the feel, everything about it. And then the tone, uh, it's, it's a fine line, but it's, it's wonderful. It it's has really that wonderful. feel of a big mm -hmm. movie. It was a butt dial, too, when you called him. So it was just, yeah, you, yeah, had, you exactly. had to. I, yeah. I actually wasn't calling him. Yeah. It's Kyle <laughs> McLaughlin. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> That's how messed up this is. Kind of text is back, new number, who's this? <laughs> oh, no. What have I done? You want to do this show? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Chris, what was it like for you to walk into this humongous project, but also with two actors of their Huge caliber? Huge stars. Yeah. Huge stars. Well, George <laughs> greeted me with a leather... This is an anecdote that we've told before, but George greeted me with a leather helmet when I came into audition, <laughs> which was off-putting at first, but also ultimately uh, relaxing at the same time. What does that mean? Like, you're going to take a beating from me? What I have no, I had no idea. Yeah. I had absolutely no idea what it meant, whether it was a euphemism for something or it was just, oh, just strange. But I, I enjoyed it. We were relaxing. We problems. But yeah, no, um, I mean, going off what Kyle said, too, some of the, the best things that I've read in a long time. And um, when you get a chance to do something like that, I mean, you jump on it with, you know, George and everyone involved. It's... Uh, yeah, it was kind of like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. So, George, you directed some episodes. Mm -hmm. You're the producer. Mm -hmm. You star in some episodes. Mm -hmm. Did you also sew all the costumes? I did. And that's why he's <laughs> naked through half of the show. <laughs> he actually is naked through well, much a, of the show. I'm glad of, you brought it up. We do a lot of male nudity. And I think he was doing a lot of crunches before he came to work every morning. Well, I'm going to call him crunches. <laughs> you, are in, you, <laughs> you are often in a state of undress. Yeah. As he is in the book, though. Yes. It's meant to be, you know, it wasn't added on by, it by him. Your, it wasn't your just choice. George, really. I didn't just go, hey, we need some, <laughs> some, we need some, some directorial choice. We need some viewers take your shirt off. We'll let the young guy. Well, they don't, they don't want us taking our shirts off. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I don't know. We're a little, they're like, no, you take your shirt off, though. 
for, <laughs> for the night shots. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It was a heavy lift, though. You're in almost every scene, it feels yeah. like. Yeah. How yeah. was that? As a project, I mean, you've been a working actor for a really long time, but this is a really big, iconic role. Sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's just a little bit of a bigger, you know, it's the same as like an independent film that I, I would have done, but it's a bigger arc to track, and there's more... You know, there's more days to do, and there's more, um, you know, we cross-boarded this whole thing, too. So I would shoot something from episode one and then jump right into doing something from episode six with, you know, with Grant or with Ellen. So it was a bit of a whirlwind, but, you know, at least I had some time to kind of prepare myself for he it. He so didn't really prepare it. I, yeah. I couldn't have done it. He was, he, we would say literally, okay, so this one, this is a scene from episode six. And then he, we'd finish it, and he'd run into a tent and change into a or take off his clothes most of the time. Right. Uh, for episode four, you know, it was constantly in flux, and, and so he did it beautifully. I would have been schizophrenic. Yeah. yeah he was. He was always around. When, when we'd come to set, or I'd come to set, he was always there because he was doing something. So it'd constantly be the same thing. He'd be like, hey, Chris. Yeah. <laughs> you sound annoyed by that. He's no, always, not at all. No. He's always around. Yeah, yeah we, we couldn't get rid of him. Well, I noticed that um, this cover of Variety Mm. Oh, I don't know where that. you were this day, Kyle. Where, where were you I'm doing? Off to the left. Oh, <laughs> yeah. You, kind of, you don't want to be on the fold. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If you pull it out, <laughs> if, you back, if you do it like this, this. Oh, yeah. oh, no. Wait, look. This has got, Chris, I mean, you're standing next to George Clooney. No. Well, you're sitting, it seems like. Yeah. But this has got George to be. George is standing next to me. Yeah. He's actually much taller than that. Yeah. <laughs> this has to be, feel really exciting. He's, George has told an interviewer that you are now officially leading man material. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, well. Look, I, quite a torch. Yeah, could you enjoy that. <laughs> no, I mean, you know, Kyle will, will tell you the same thing. You know, it, 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 you, if you, you find somebody that can do comedy and drama and is a proper grown-up leading man, there aren't that many actually out there. And uh, and we're always looking for that in casting in general when you're casting a project. And so, you know, he's he's this is sort of a a big moment for him. I think, and we're really excited about it. I was thinking the same thing and wondering, Kyle, do you remember your moment that's similar to what Chris is Gosh, experiencing? Gosh, it was so long ago. I mean... <laughs> like 40, 50 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, oh, that's a real question. It was a real question. Um, now I feel kind of awkward about it, no, but I meant, do no, you remember that you moment <laughs> that you felt Correct. like you that made you it? made it? You know what, I'll tell you the exact moment. It was one of the first shows I did. It was here in New York City. I was inside the limo, we were doing Homefront. It had just gotten picked up. We came up here to do the whole thing, and I was in the limo, and I looked out of the window, and I thought, my God, I'm looking out. <laughs> and I thought, I've made it, I've made it. And uh, that was, my, that was my, my recognition of, ah, I'm working, that's good. There's never a clear moment, though. I mean, we, I got out of the car to, to do the uh, upfronts that we just did, and everyone outside thought I was someone completely different. So it's just like, if I was, if I was riding on any kind of cloud, it, it's quickly... I just got shot Have down. you yeah, thought just about a, just carrying just this around slide. with you? Yeah, yeah right. You just, could, I yeah. should. I might as well. <laughs> like, oh, George is on it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. If you could go back and give yourselves advice at that exact moment, or what would be a piece of advice, or wish, something I, you wish someone had told you? Well, I remember meeting Paul Newman uh, on the lot at Warner Brothers just as ER hit. And ER was this phenomenon. People don't really, if you weren't around for it, don't really understand. We were getting 40 million people, you know, and people were literally coming home to watch a show. It had nothing to do with any of us. It really was the show, it was the star. But we were part of that. And so, you know, we went from no one knowing who we were to two weeks after the show came out, we were on the cover of Newsweek, you know, and everything, everything changed. And suddenly we were chased and all the things that come with it that aren't the most fun. And Paul Newman came over and, and he, he was standing, he was shooting a film at Warner Brothers and I saw him and I went over to talk to him and he just goes, how's it going? And I said, it's wild, it's a wild ride. I, you know, I never thought I'd have a career like this or I never thought I'd be in this position. And he goes, yeah, just don't let him keep you inside. And, right. and he meant it about, you can, your tendency is to try to hold on to your privacy so much because it gets taken away, particularly on television. You know, I've been to, I used to get off a plane with, uh, you know, a Julia Roberts, and everybody's like, Julia Roberts, Julia Roberts. And then they see me, and they're like, George! And they come <laughs> over, and they, you know, because I was in their home, and they could make me talk or not talk. And, you know, you're much more a part of their, their lives. And, and so your tendency is to pull back and not to do things. And he was like, get out. Don't let that happen. And that was 
good advice in general. Yeah. You don't have that problem. No, clearly not. You're out on the they did, the, yeah. guy, the guy didn't know who you they were. They don't know who I am. No, he didn't care. Yeah, no one cares. I will say that <laughs> with George and Kyle, both of you seem to be that uh, rare thing in Hollywood. You're really famous and really successful and great actors, but you're not jerks. Mm. Hey, How you do you do leave that? Me alone. Yeah. What are you talking about? No, I, say that again, though. That sounded good. It sounded yeah. good. Not I sure. liked all of that. Which part? Just the the leading man, yeah, and the, then the successful. he liked the leading man part too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that felt good. good. Yeah, it is good. good actor. The, good actor. Yeah, that felt nice. Didn't it? Kyle yeah. forgot the question. Yeah. Already. <laughs> <laughs> the jerk thing makes me think you've been talking to my wife. That's <laughs> <what I'm> <laughs> but you, you really aren't. You don't seem to have let it go to your heads, and you seem to have heads on your shoulders. Is it living in Texas and not living in Hollywood? What's the I don't know what secret? Oh God, parents. Mm -hmm. uh, friends, good friends, good parents, good, good common sense. Yeah. Also helps, I think, maybe that uh, I think neither one of us sort of had great success too young. <laughs> so, you know, I think the tendency when you're young, my Aunt Rosemary was really a big star at 19 years old. Mm -hmm. And the problem with that is that, um, you know, when everybody tells you how great you are, you believe it. Uh, and so when things start to go south and they tell you how bad you are, you believe that too. And it's a very dangerous sort of balance. When you're older, you've, you know, I've done 13 pilots before ER hit and seven other series. So I'd been on that ride of like, well, this is going to be huge. And it wasn't. So you get better at understanding how little of this has to do with you, quite honestly. And sometimes it's luck plays a big part. Chris, what are your aspirations in this business since mm. we've decided that you are America's next leading yes, man? Yes, you are. Well, I didn't decide it. George Clooney decided it. Right. Kyle, do you I agree? agree with it. Yeah, right. most definitely. To yeah. take that mantle and just bury it, yeah. stomp on it. <laughs> You're doing a good and job And subvert so far, all right? expectations <laughs> as much as possible. No, no, I mean, it's always, I mean, it's just, you know, it's just work. You know what I mean? Work, that's all it's really about. It's all it's always been about. There's no, like, there's no big overarching different kind of game plan it's just kind of continue on and just you know work with people that I like and as much as I can you know it's a funny thing people I, I think sometimes people understand actors in general have this overarching thing of the minute you finish the job I'll never work again yeah. I mean it happens to all of us still it's still part of your it's in your psyche in a way like okay well what are we gonna do and so there is this version of like just go to work get get get, get a job go to work and uh, that's part of it that you can't have any you can't have great plans on what your career actually is going to be. You know, ultimately you're not in control of it. No, you know, so no. Yeah. It's not like being a lawyer or an accountant mm -hmm. or working in PR. Well, because here's the. the I'll, I'll tell you a, an interesting example. For a lot of these things, a, a doctor or if you do the eight years of training, you're a doctor when it's over. Mm -hmm. I mean, you might not like what you're doing, but you're a doctor when it's over. You can go eight years to acting school, and that doesn't mean you're going to have a job ever. So there isn't really, there's no, you know, it's not a cause and effect thing. So it's all, you know, luck. You've got to be in the right place at the right time. You have to be ready for it, all those things. I guess you have to be comfortable with uncertainty mm. to a certain extent. You have to learn to be comfortable yeah. with it, that's for sure. Yeah. 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 Some people are calling this, George, your return to TV. Do you think about it lightly? You mean this right now with you? Catch 22. Yes, <laughs> oh, us right is, here. Let's I'm make this the show. Amanda. This is my return to TV. <laughs> right, guys? Everybody, you feel it? I feel it too. Here he is. He's on TV. Ah, feels good. <laughs> um, it's like you never left. Well, you know, I've been, I've been doing television projects for a long time, and uh, I never cared about the medium. I really didn't. You know, uh, we did live version of Fail Safe. We did a TV show called Unscripted for HBO. I've done a lot of television over the years. You just want to do good projects. You don't care what it's, what medium it's in. And you know, uh, Hulu was great to step up and want to do this for six episodes. You know, it's not a. This isn't a, a slam dunk. It's a period piece. You know, and uh, and it's tonally tricky. So the fact that they were like, yeah, let's do it. I, mean, we, I, I think we're immensely lucky uh, that there's any that you know. I, this wouldn't work as a film. You know, it would only work as a television show. It is tricky because when I first was watching it, I wasn't, I didn't really like your character all that much. I thought he was a bit of a whiner. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. But over time, I start to feel for him a little sure. bit. Yeah, I mean, I think that's kind of the idea, a little bit, you know. Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah he's a character that, you know, he's a very flawed character, you know, in the book. He is one of the, he's a coward, you know. And so you have to, 
uh, follow his logic, which there is actually a logic to it, uh, and eventually the ride, you know, is worth it. And that's sort of you know, why that's why we hired Chris. Kyle, did you enjoy tapping into your inner drill sergeant? Look, let me tell you something. <laughs> no, just... I, I had I had uh, I had big pieces of dialogue <laughs> that I sat down with at home and structured out how to get these things memorized. I mean. You you had all the work of yeah. memorizing state, but anyway, <laughs> um, I, I was a little nervous about you know doing them, and once it started rolling, I don't I don't recall having so much fun <laughs> under the circumstances as before. And I knew, I was smart enough to know it well enough where I could take any direction and just insert it immediately. I already knew what the options might be. I had a blast with what I with what I did. Whether it works or not, I don't know, because it's out there. There, there are certain things I wanted to accomplish, and I've been told I, I, I got close to the mark. So yeah, you did. You we'll see. I it's think funny. you're a scene stealer. Yeah. Well, that's, I'll take that too. He, you know, you've never seen God do anything like this. He's a madman, and it's really fun when you're, you know, ah, my God, it's like a pirate out there at some point. <laughs> but it know. seems to come kind of naturally to you. It's sort of like when I'm home yelling at the kids. Sure. <laughs> I really think it's very similar. Yeah. Get in here. Maybe George could use you. You have two kids about to, two twins about yes. to turn two. Yes. Which is. Which is good because if they're twins, they should both turn the same age. At the it's, same well, so that works. <laughs> but it's the terrible two. Yeah. Times two. I know. Well, no, they're not terrible twos. They're yeah. good kids. They're happy kids. They laugh a lot. They do pranks already. They're they're good kids. You teaching them the pranks? Is I'm teaching them all kinds of horrible things to do to their their grandmothers. <laughs> the family business. Yeah. yeah, all of it. They put like peanut butter on their shoes so that it looks like poo poo on their shoes and stuff. <laughs> and they think that's funny. So we, you know, we, I'm, I'm working on them. They're gonna they'll have a proper sense of humor. What has surprised you about being a dad? I think what everyone else knows who's a dad uh, is that, you know, there's a lot of things you can do as a parent, but they really do, and it's really, you can see it because they're twins, they really come out with the personalities that they're born with, you know? I mean, he's, he's he, my daughter will be like, sit down, <laughs> and then he'll sit down, and, you know, they're, they're just completely different personalities, and they're fun and smart, and, I mean, they already can... Uh, you do all their ABCs in Italian and in English, and I can't do that That's in English. <laughs> <laughs> this was actually shot in Italy, right? Yeah, we were in Sardinia yeah. and in Rome. in Rome. Spectacular. That's not a bad job. Yeah. Not bad at all. You live, you have a place kind of near there? Not really, about yeah. uh, like an hour flight. So no crazy, crazy afternoons at George's house? No, we couldn't, we couldn't pull that off too much, but we, uh, but we had very fun times in Sardinia. And uh, a lot of fun. And uh, very fun times in Rome. It was beautiful there. I mean, you know, can't go wrong with Italy. Yeah. Kyle, your daughters are older now. Do you ever miss that little kid stage? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, the, the one's out of the house now. She's out of college, and the other one's uh, junior. We were just talking about colleges the day before yesterday with her advisor and what have you. And yeah, you start getting the idea of, yeah, it's, you see little kids and what have you. And, um, they're almost out of the nest, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> you don't even mean it. No, it's it's good. It's yeah. a it's a good, it's a good room. Yeah. I it's wanted awesome. to ask you before I let you go. Um, last week, you and Amal launched an initiative called mm -hmm. Trial Watch, <laughs> which, as you know, is um, keeping an eye on regimes around the world and what mm -hmm. happens inside a courtroom. Right. And um, are you just kind of blown away by your wife and all that she's able to juggle? And well, I mean, think about it. She's you know, she's taking ISIS to court for the first time anybody's taking ISIS to court. She's uh, defending the Yazidis for the genocide that they, they experienced. She's uh, working on trying to get the, the uh, Reuters journalists out of Myanmar. She's, you know, she's doing all that, and she's also uh, an incredible mom, like an incredible mom, and, uh, and a pretty great wife, too. So I feel like I hit the jackpot. I feel very, very lucky. You know. Well, before I let you go, can you imagine doing a project together? Because this really feels like it's working. Could you? Do you we, think we, you might do it again? We're going to do a road show. <laughs> oh, this? Yeah, we're going to. I'm do, good. We're, yeah, are you done? Yeah, oh. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> wow. Wow. He goes good. That's okay. That's a, quick. There's no, but there's oh, no, there's no sequel. To this. We did it. Oh no! You, you're mean? alive. Oh yeah. There's, 
Catch there, I mean, there's a book. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, I've done it. Ocean's 11, 12, 13, Catch 23, yeah. Catch 24. You can just keep going. This is like Hotel right. California. You can check in, but you can yeah, never check out. Uh, Close. You can never time. leave. Yeah. <laughs>